Greetings, Twin Flame Lover. Hi, it's Dr. Amanda Newell, the Twin Flame Matchmaker. I have a super powerful tool that's gonna to help you cut through your Twin Flame love blocks. What is the most common mistake that holds women back from quickly calling in their divine partner? So stay tuned. So if you're a powerful woman, a goddess who's been looking for your divine partner for a long time, maybe even years or decades, like it was for me, it was about 15 years of a long, tough ride and search for my beloved. If this is you, you have scoured the internet, you have even traveled the globe perhaps, you've met so many potential people in bars, in nightclubs, and then you gave that up and then you went into yoga classes and you couldn't find anybody there. You dated to only find yourself up in the wrong corners where you couldn't get yourself out unless you left the person. I wanna let you know the most common mistake that women are not looking at that they're not clearing out a big, hairy, scary block is going to help them and you quickly call in your divine partner. So don't miss this one. It's so important. Are you ready? All right, I know you are. It is that you're coming from a place of looking outside of yourself and trying to please a man or a person. Super important. Your twin flame, your beloved, is simply a reflection of you. So if you are trying to be all things to all people and you're people pleasing and you're trying to make sure that your man thinks you look hot and you're dressing to impress and you are talking to impress and even your, your career that you've chosen, your way of living your life is simply to impress other people. You are going to certainly fail in the twin flame department. You're gonna find somebody that ultimately cannot really connect with the real person you are or you'll be abandoned over and over again. So you'll either have option A is you'll be in partnership, but it's not going to be a divinely aligned partnership. You won't really see each other, connect with each other at the heart, and you'll make it work, but you'll be suppressing parts of yourself. Ugh, don't do that. Or you would be living in a constant state of chasing after people and they don't stick and they run from you because they're like, why do you want me so badly? Why are you trying to please me? All beings want to be with their beloved who has pleased themselves first. There is no way around this, people. We absolutely need to fall in love with ourselves first, to pleasure ourselves first, and come from that place of our cup runneth over, where we are living our life from a place of mastery, pleasure, divinity, excitement, where your career is an extension of your soul and your soul purpose where the way you live your life, your rituals in the morning, your self-care regimens, your yoga, your way of eating, everything is sacredly aligning with your way. The way that I was living my life 10, 15 years ago is radically different than the way I live my life now. Back then, I was trying to fit in. I was trying to fit into very small pants. I was trying to fit in with perfect hair and skin and makeup. And I was trying to fit in wearing all black, the pea coat from J. Crew, that was the style back at the time, where I was dressing to camouflage my light, to really dumb it down because I didn't want to stand out. I didn't want to seem too weird or too colorful or too wild or um, like I was rocking the boat too much. And the men that I attracted, were attracted to my light, but they were afraid of what I had because I was afraid of it too. They were like allured into it, but then they would get to a certain point and be like, why doesn't she love herself? Or I wasn't expecting all this, well, this is too much. And so I began believing that I was too much. And this is what I see so many women struggling with. You feel like you're too much, too big, so you dim your light and you end up trying to please other people because you feel that you're too much. So start a practice of pleasing yourself first. When you date, what do you want to wear to feel good? When you work out, what feels good for your body? Do you prefer dancing over running in a hamster treadmill? Or do you want to listen to music that feels really inspiring or listen to audiobooks while you work out? Do not have any aspect of your life be mundane, painful, boring. Lift yourself up with pleasure. Even if it's just having a ritualistic 
you know, morning ritual of massaging yourself in oil or, you know, joining a meditation group once a week is something that really supports you. You can start small. It doesn't have to be a complete life makeover all at once. The goal in the long term is to create a life that's so juicy, so full, so ah, mmm, yummy, that your partner walks into that scene and starts speaking with you on your script of pleasure versus the other way around of living in somebody else's life. Somebody who's miserable, struggling, trying to fit into a box. Can't you imagine the difference if we all lived our lives breaking away the boxes, living in our own pleasure, coming together in pleasure, twin flames orgasmically coming together in pleasure to become the twin flame power couples, leaders living the lives of their dreams, overflowing with joy and love, giving back. We women have to stand in our pleasure power. We can't keep giving it away, expecting somehow that will magically call us in a partner that fills in the gaps that loves us where we don't want to love and look at ourselves yet. I hope you took away a nugget from today's video. I look forward to seeing you next time. And please do join me for the new moon rock cow ritual to quickly call in your beloved. I will see you there. And if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. Namaste, namasko, love and light.